Hey there guys, welcome to this new GameMaker Studio tutorial. Uh, this tutorial was requested very recently, and basically what it was about was how to make those 3D sprites in GameMaker, you know, the ones that you see in Doom. So what I mean by that is, for example, I have loaded in the Imp sprite, basically when he's going to the left, when he's going to the top left, when he's going to the top, etc, etc. Basically how to do that. I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. So let's just load up our game and see what I actually mean. So this is what I mean by that. As you can see, when you move around the imp, its sprite changes according to your own vision. But you gotta bear in mind that Doom was actually developed in late 2000... Oh, 2000, what am I saying? Sorry. 1992, and was released in December of 1993. And therefore, it was very expensive at the time to load in 3D models. So they basically used some sprites that looked like they were in 3D, but they weren't. So instead of using 600 triangles, they actually used only two. So that's a, a major, major improvement in my opinion. So it's really cool that you can actually do this in GameMaker. My method isn't the best, but I hope it will help you a little bit. And we're actually not going to use this file here. We're actually going to start from the beginning. So as you can see, I've already done a bunch of stuff, but... Yeah, you won't learn a thing from just copying this, as you did in my previous tutorials, and I think my previous tutorials, I have learned a lot, and I think this is just not the right way of explaining something. So we're going to just make a new project and do Doom Sprites 2. Simple as that. Alright, so we're starting here with a blank project. Let's go add a sprite, that is the player. Just very simple, just doesn't matter what it is just create a little circle and you're good to go because you'll never see this sprite actually so now the fun stuff I'm going to create a group and call it imp and I'm going to right click and add an existing sprite so now I'm going to go where did I save this oh no game maker tutorials maybe yes there it is alright so I'm going to go to the sprites and select all these sprites I could have just simply copy this sprite as well but it's just <laughs> it's 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 nothing it doesn't take any effort at all to make this so we have all our sprites now that's very nice it's a very very nice option of game maker to have this I'm really happy they have it I'm also going to add a background now uh, you don't have to do that but you know it's just a doom background all right so we're actually pretty far in now let's go to the fun stuff which is the object Let's go make a camera object. We're going to keep this very simple. We're just going to add an event, create event, and we're going to add in a little code, which is under control tab in case you don't know that yet. Just going to do this, go it like init player. This will actually change the name of your script here. And let's go add a D3 start. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. So we can actually use our 3D functions. Let's go D3 set hidden which basically hides all the meshes behind other meshes which are in front of the player's view. If you set lighting, we're going to set that to false. We're not going to use any lighting now. If you set culling, set that to true just for optimization. Draw set color to white because the default is black and you won't be able to see a thing. So we're going to use white. Z equals zero and our height, let's do 32 or something like that. Pitch is zero, which basically look it up and down. So we're also going to make a global variable. Just go with global var and then face way or something like that. Doesn't really... Oh, got to spell it correctly though. Doesn't really matter what you call it. Then go underneath it and initialize it. And that's all you need to do for now. Let's go to the step event. And we're going to make sure that you can look around. So how do we do that? So we're going to do direction. Minus, which is basically the same as this, but you you can just do whatever you want. I'm going to use this because it's a very long string of code. So display get width divided by two, which is the center of the screen, minus the display mouse get x value, then divided by ten or something like that, which is this ten over here. We can call it sensitivity. Is that how you spell it? Sensitive? Yes, that's how you spell it. Good. I'm going to make a quick variable called sensitivity. I can barely see it. There we go. So basically, 
Let's comment that out a little bit. Sensitivity. 10 equals normal, 20 equals low, and like 5 is high. That's basically how it works. Okay, so now that we have done that, we're going to do the same thing for the pitch. Minus display get height instead of width, divided by 2, display mouse get y, divided by the sensitivity. Then, the last thing, display mouse set, display get width, divided by 2, display get height, divided by 2. There we go. And also one more thing, which isn't necessary, but it just, it's just, it's better. It's just so much better to have this in your game. Just clamp the pitch to about 89, not to 90, because you will look upside down for some reason. But um, yeah, this uh, seems to work okay. But now your, your cursor is actually locked in place in the middle of your screen. So we're going to do this. If keyboard check, keyboard escape, we're going to end the game. So if you press escape, you're going to end the game. By the way, don't use this in your final product unless it's just a little, little time waster game, but just don't do it. It's not very professional. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a draw event. Um, let's do, let's just call it projection. By the way, if you're just, if you're absolutely not interested in this, you can just skip to the timestamp, which is right here. And there will actually, exp then I'll actually, actually explain how to do these sprites. So, X cause Dectorette direction y sinus y sinus dectorate direction Let's see tangent tangent dectorate pitch you don't really need to know what this actually does i don't know what it is what it does exactly to be honest but i know it works and that's what really matters to be honest so let's add a projection code as well and we're going to do an extended one x y z Sinus tangent one. This is the FOV right here. So we're just going to call it FOV field of view. And I'm going to set it to about 60, which is closer to the original Doom. I guess in the original Doom it was even lower than this, but I'm not really sure about that. I'm just going to do an aspect ratio of 4 by 3, 1, and let's do 2000 or something like that. All right, so now the the player is entirely done. Just for one thing, I completely forgot about that. This global variable face way. We're going to go to the step event, and we're going to add face way equals direction. This will come in handy later. All right, so that's basically what you got to do with the player. Now we're going to add fun stuff, which is the imp. Ugh, I haven't played the original Doom in so long, but I remember the imps being one of the most annoying things. Just them shooting at you from a distance like that is just really annoying. Well, let's go add <coughs> sprites. And we're going to use an array for this. So if you don't know what an array is, it's basically a list of items. You can use this for your inventory, you can use it for whatever you wish. But we're going to do it simply. Like, we're going to do it very simply like this. Sprite equals, let's see, what do we call it? I'm going to get the uh, little reference here, because I can... To be honest, I kind of forgot what to do. I actually prepared this tutorial very well in the beginning, but I completely forgot. All right, you stop, start with the top one, and then go to the top right one. Okay. So sprite one is sprite imp top. What did I call it? Oh, sorry. Like that. All right, then you just got to go to the right. Like this, just copy it. And maybe I said this in the beginning, but I don't remember if I did. But these Doom sprites actually contain eight directions, but we're going to have an array with nine elements in it. And I'll tell you why that is. That's because, um, basically because it will return an error when it gets above this value. And it will get above this value. Because we're going to round this array later in the step event, if that makes any sense. But you'll, you'll notice that soon enough. But that's, uh, that's going to give you an error. And if you don't know how to fix that error, it's basically this. Just add another one to your array. Down left, left, right, top left, and then the last one will be top again, just like the first one. All right. But why use arrays? Well, it's very simple. Arrays are very flexible. So if you want, for example, you want 16 
directions instead of eight. You can just add those in between and it will just loop through them, which is very nice. But also, we're going to use arrays because you can actually add animations to it. Well, this isn't the official animation. I quickly made this. Oh, that's way too fast. But this is what you'll see. This is the only one that's animating, to be honest, because I'm not an animator. I'm not even a model artist or anything. So yeah, that's basically what that is. Let's do direction equals random 360 degrees. This so that the imp is facing a random direction, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I'd just like to comment that anyway. Okay, so now we're going to add in the sprite of the imp. Oh, that's the wrong one. I've, I actually thought, how? Why do I already have a draw event? But it's right over here. Draw event, just going to call it draw event. Not really a good name for a draw event inside a draw event, but, you know, whatever. Draw set alpha test. Why are we doing this? Well, the sprite is transparent over here. And it will give you some kind of alpha issue that you had in Game Maker's previous versions as well. So with this function, you can actually cut that out. So we're going to go to the camera real quick and add this little thing, but we're going to extend it and call it reference value. We're going to set that to about 200, which is basically the threshold of the alpha pixels that will be drawn. So if you set this, for example, for, to a very low value, it will still draw most of the transparent pixels. But when you set it to 200, it will barely draw any of these. I mean, 5 would be fine for this sprite in particular, but we're actually going to untick, unbox this interplay color between pixels. So now it really doesn't matter what you put it at, what you set it as, you can basically set it at 1, it will be fine. We're just going to keep it at 200. Um, let's go back to the imp. Oh yeah, make sure you... Ah, come on. Get, turn it off at the end of your code as well because it's very CPU intensive for some reason. Don't really know why. So we're going to do draw DVD transform add rotation on the Z axis. We're going to do faceway. So faceway is basically the player's own direction. Which uh, this uh, this effect is also called billboarding. You have it in Unity 3D. Every, basically every engine of all time uses this this function right here because it's very it's it's just a good option of making sprites look your way. It's basically the only one to be honest. So if you transform add translation x y zero, and then we're going to draw a wall which is the imp. We're going to uh, how tall is the imp? So 24. 48, 0, 24, 0. All right, here comes the fun part. Sprite, get texture. Sprite. And oh, I can't really remember what I did. I think I just called it like index or something like that. And then the, well, image index. 1, 1, okay. Set identity, just to wrap it up. So now, what does this index do? Basically what this index does, it will just loop through the sprites, just start with the top one. Oh, no, got, should not be changing the name of that. We'll start with the top one, then go up to, to top right. Well, it's not really in the right order for some reason, but it will be when you play your game. So let's add in a step event. I actually have this little thing right here. Um, let's do this. I'm just going to copy it real quick because it's a lot of fine-tuning and, well, we really don't have much time to do this tutorial. I have school soon, so just call it Step Event 1 or something like that. Alright, so I'm going to explain what this does. I'm going to increase the size of the text a little bit so you can see better. So we're going to start with the variable direction, which is the imp's own direction. Then there's an angle, which is the face way, which subtracts the direction that it's facing that way. The face way is still the player's own rotation. So this will come in handy later. I'll show you what this is all about and then you'll understand why the angle is the way it is. Then we have another variable called final, ang final angle which will round the angle, this one, by 45. And why 45? Because when you divide 360 degrees by 8 you will get 45. So for example if we had only four sprites it would be 90. 
And if you wanted to change this to 16, so you'd have a smoother rotation, you'd change it to 22.5. But we only have 8, so we're going to keep it at 45. Now, this angle, so it is basically subtracting the direction of the imp from the faceway. So if this final angle is smaller than 8, which is this, and it's larger than 0, then final angle 2 equals final angle 1. But what does this do? Well, in the other object that I've made, you get a little sprite index. Because I'm going to I'm using a lot of these different variables throughout. So final angle two is final angle one. And what does this do? You have a lot of indexes here, as you can see. So one th zero through eight. Zero is the top one, and eight is another top one. So seven will be the last one. It's really hard to explain this, but if you just copy this and maybe try to look at it. You'll finally understand, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. Because it was a lot of fine-tuning. I didn't really know how I did it in the end, but it kind of worked. So, else if the final angle is larger than 8, final angle 2 will be this minus 8. So it will start over from the beginning. Because it can be negative, that's the problem with this. So And else if final angle is smaller than 0, as you can see it's, it's negative now, the final angle 2 will be plus 8, so it will keep positive because you don't have negative values, negative indexes in an array. So then it will change the sprite to the final angle. What we're also going to do here, as I'm going to resize this real quick, I'm going to add vertex begin. Oh no, no, never mind. What am I doing? Primitive begin, sorry. Kind of lost track of myself. PR line list. I rarely use vertices, so it's really strange vertexes. I don't know if there's a difference between that, to be honest. Sorry. X, Y, 0. Let's do 1. And then the final one will be the vertex. Len X, len Y, 1. You don't have to do this, by the way. It's just for debugging. Length, direction. Let's do 64, direction. And to do the same for a Y length there, whatever it's called. And then end on DVD primitive end. All right, so that's basically it. That's basically all you got to do. So you're going to add in this room. It's going to room arena or something like that, something stupid. And let's do a... Now that's a little small. So that. And let's make a black background color and add our new imp. Also we're going to give some quick controls. You can skip to this little timestamp that's right here to see what the game looks like. So or come on, why? That keeps that's weird. It just keeps changing to the English variant for some reason. Yeah, I want the Dutch one, thank you. W X length direction X. Let's do two. And do the same thing here. Oh, come on. Okay, that's good. Let's do the same thing for A and D. Maybe for S as well. So we can get a nice west. Let's do plus 90. Minus 90. And finally. Oh, sorry, it is 180. <laughs> this one is minus 90. Okay. Let's let's just go see what it looks like. No, it's, it's turning the wrong way, but you get the idea. It works. It works just fine. Well, I did it. I kind of messed it up. Just looking left and right, but it still works. Um, yeah, that's basically all you got to do. I hope I explained it well enough for you to understand. It's, it's just a topic that I I only recently did, to be honest. After this tutorial was requested, I actually did it for the first time. And it worked. But it's just, uh, I don't really know how it works, to be honest. Just a little bit. I tried to explain it the best I could. Hope this works. There's a downloadable file in the description below. And... Yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. 
If you still have any questions about this regarding the, the sprites or why I use arrays or anything else, just feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.